Right, the, uh, the different kinds of uh, access control methods. Now, um, in a sense, this, this is uh, theoretical because um, it is not terribly likely you will encounter anything except discretionary access control these days. Uh, I mean, with the, the loss of, or at least the neglect of, um, information classification overall, we are uh, not seeing very much in, in the way of uh, actual management of, you know, what, what should be an, an active part of access control, and that is the authorization, decisions about authorization. It depends on the classification, and we should be doing it, and we're not. And so, anyways, um, well, then, you know, let's, let's start with discretionary access control. That is what is being used these days. Um, that is, uh, we leave it to the owners. And, and the, the owner, of course, the, the uh, data owner, um, now, you know, uh, occasionally this is the system owner, but primarily this is, you know, whoever creates a particular entity, a particular file, uh, you know, whatever kind of resource that we've got. You know, there, there is, it's, it's their discretion. They are the, the owner, um, and they have the say on who gets access and again because we're not doing classification because we are not paying attention to these things basically that is being done on an ad hoc basis we should ensure that whoever is the data owner whoever is uh, creating these uh, entities these files these resources um, we should be paying attention to that and therefore we should be ensuring and, and ensuring that they know um, how to do proper classification and how to decide who gets access to this resource. Um, now, you know, occasionally we have an office that is uh, doing that and, and certainly with our larger um, and you know admittedly probably more important databases uh, and and certainly with regard to uh, certain applications it is the system owner that is that is doing that classification you know okay fine well and good um, hopefully the system owner has the the training in terms of uh, who gets what and, and decisions are being made properly in terms of access in terms of of who is most appropriate who gets authorization but uh, you know again um, this is unfortunately something that is is being neglected and and we have to uh, or we we should be at, at the very least, paying more attention to uh, these entities. Now, um, that is discretionary access control. The owner, uh, the data owner, the system owner, uh, the owner has discretion. Uh, the owner is, is the one who makes the decision. Uh, okay. Then we have mandatory access control. Mandatory access control is uh, determining the uh, access not on the basis of the owner, but on the basis of the system itself. And the system does that by matching the classification, the sensitivity of the data 
with the clearance of the person requesting access. Now, this is, um, again, you know, if, well, as I say, you are not likely to see a mandatory access control system uh, these days. You are going to see some. Uh, but um, by and large, in, in business, no. This is, this is not going to be used. Um, it's it's going to be very specialized systems that are using mandatory access control. And so in, in practice, you probably will not encounter them. You need to know what they are. Um, the, uh, <laughs> the exam is definitely going... Uh, to ask you questions about this, um, but uh, yeah, in, in uh, actual practice, it's going to be rare that you are going to find these systems. Um, but you you need to know that you know the sensitive the match of the sensitivity of the information with the clearance of the individual doing the request and the fact that it is enforced by the system itself. There is no longer discretion. The, the person who is, you know, the, the data owner, um, they can't say, you know, this is, this is who gets access to it. Uh, that's not an issue anymore. That's not uh, available to them. There is no discretion. The uh, the access is is mandated. It is mandatory. You know the decision is being made by the system, and it's being done on the basis of the classification that uh, the information has been given. Very often by a central authority. So here we have um, the uh, a, a much. Uh, greater requirement for and and uh, provision of the the training for um, you know what is the the you know how consistently is the classification going to be done is it going to be done by people who know how to do information classification those types of things um, we we have a much better uh, handle on on that and and much better control uh, now there is something even older than mandatory access control even less likely uh, to be encountered and that is what is known as non-discretionary access control non-discretionary access control is not being enforced it, it doesn't you know as its name says you know you know the owner doesn't have discretion and it is not being enforced by the system. But the information classification and the decision about who is getting authorized is being made by a central authority. So once again, we do have a situation where the consistency of decisions about classification, the consistency of determinations of what is sensitive, uh, what is not sensitive, um, who gets access, they're being made um, more consistently by a trained central authority, but it's not being enforced specifically by the system on the basis of clearance.